Seven minutes, how to start up the A320 fly-by-wire. Here we go, Captain. In the previous video, we have checked how to configure the airplane. Now it's time to start it, and the next one will be about takeoff. Let's start the tutorial. We are currently at the gate, and the plane is pitch black. First, let's give the airplane a bit of power by clicking the two battery buttons. The battery only power up essential systems, but we need all systems available, so let's connect to the ground power using the external power button. We are now connected to the airport power grid, and you should hear the ventilation kicking in. We can now start up the navigation system by switching these three knobs on the nav position. To give a bit of context, a plane gets its position via a inertial reference system. It means the plane knows its location by calculating accelerations and rotations from a defined GPS starting point. This process takes around 10 minutes to start up, and the plane should never move during this time. Take a look at your screen. You should see everything is red and a timer on the central display will tell you when the system is operational. Do not move the airplane until this timer ends. Speaking of time, this is the perfect moment to board passengers and configure your aircraft. This part has been covered in the previous video, so if you missed it, please take a look as it's mandatory for future instructions of this video. Now let's consider, passengers are on board and the MCDU is properly configured. Flight crew just closed the door and you are ready to start up the engines. First thing to do is to start the APU, which is a small onboard generator that will give electricity to the airplane. This generator needs fuel, so let's activate fuel pump by clicking these six buttons. Now look at the APU section at the bottom of the overhead panel and click master switch, then start. APU is slowly spooling up. Looking down at your center screen, you should see the APU status. We have just reached 100%, meaning the APU is running. We can now remove the external power by clicking the dedicated button. The plane is now self-powered. But wait a minute. That APU thing might have raised some question on your side. So far we have talked about the battery, the external power, and now the APU. All of them are about giving electricity to the plane. Why do planes have so many power source, and why and when we should use them? Well, that's simple, and I will be happy to explain. The first equipment is the battery which will power a very limited amount of systems, primarily the essential ones. Same as your regular car, it drains power when engine is not running, so you want to quickly connect to the ground power unit, a direct wire from a ground equipment to your aircraft. It takes time to prepare the plane and board passengers, around 30 minutes to an hour and a half for jumbo jets, so it's always better to use the airport power grid or a good old diesel generator than using your APU, which is literally a turbine. After boarding time, you want to push back and start the engine, but the ground power unit won't follow you. So you need an alternative source of power during that very small time of pushing and starting up. That's where the APU kicks in. It's a built-in power generator, but it burns jet fuel, so you only want to use it during startup, or if the airport does not have a ground power unit available. Open fuel pumps and start the APU. Once turned on, the GPU is not needed anymore because the power now comes from the APU. Push back, start up. Then your airplane has two big generators running. Thus the APU is not needed anymore because your two engines will take care of that job. Now that you understand the difference between each electrical systems, let's continue. We are ready for pushback. The third party tool I am using is linked in the description. Feel free to install it. During the pushback, our engine will need compressed air, and only the APU can provide it at the moment. To activate compressed air, click the APU bleed button. Let's start the pushback. Release the parking brake using this lever. Ladies and gentlemen, from the now the plane is moving. It's time to start up the engines. At the bottom of the thrust lever, you would find a switch, put it on the ignition position, then flip the engine to cutoff. It will initiate the startup procedure for engine number two. You can monitor engine data on the center screen. It should slowly rise up to, wait a minute. What? Okay, it's an interesting way of pushing, but hey, only the result matters, right? We are back on the ground. Engine two is stable at around 20%, meaning it's up and running. Let's start engine one, go back to the thrust lever and raise the engine one cutoff. 
monitor the center screen, and wait for the plane to stabilize at 20% N1. You should also see available when it's done. Nice, both engines are running. Let's check the message display and continue the setup. First, the ignition is still running, so all we have to do is put back the switch to normal. Second, APU is not needed anymore because electricity and compressed air are managed by both engines. Third, the predicted wind shear warning system can be activated here. Last but not least, the TCAS system needs to be activated. Click this switch to enable the transponder, then put the TCAS switch on traffic advisory. Last warnings are about parking brake, which is normal because we are not moving, and APU available, which is also normal because the APU takes a couple of minutes to completely shut down. And this is it. You successfully started the A320 fly-by-wire, ready to take the skies to another level. Next video will be about taking off this beautiful machine. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe for more content. Safe flight, Captain.